Okay, I don't know what's taking me so long here. I've had this thing for a little while now. I guess I've just been enjoying it too much, but we got the Ambernick RG Cube. So the specs, I'm not going to dwell on it. I'll put most of this stuff on the screen, but this thing runs Android 13. You could use micro SD cards up to two terabytes. It's got some RGB lighting effects around the analog sticks. You could customize that within the operating system. Got 3.95 inch multi-touch IPS screen. And the one thing that's unique here is it's got a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, 720 by 720 resolution screen here, right? CPU is a Unisoc T820. And I'm gonna put these uh, the rest of these specs up on the screen because I can't read half of this stuff. GPU, it's a quad-core Mali G57 at 850 megahertz. Got 2.4 and uh, 5 gigahertz wireless, uh, you know, Wi-Fi. Bluetooth 5.0. So yeah, you could use this thing uh, as a console, essentially, if you use a USB-C to HDMI adapter. I did that, and I started playing uh, some PS2 quite a bit here. It's kind of fun. You know, a little Bluetooth controller, and bam, you're up in it. So this thing's also got uh, 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM. Got 5,200 milliamp hour battery for around 7 hours of use, and I actually was getting probably pretty close to that. I'm just estimating, okay? I don't know for sure, but it seemed like that. Somewhere around that. You got dual speakers. Sounds pretty decent. That's all I'm going to comment on on the speakers. They sound pretty good. They come out from the bottom. We got Hall Effect analog sticks. Everybody with them Hall Effect sticks nowadays. That's a good thing. You got six axes gyro. Hall Effect triggers as well. Customizable fan with active heat dissipation. That's good. Firmware over the air upgrades. I did update this thing because there was a new update. You got 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, plus all the other things that a typical Android device can do. You can download apps and all that stuff, but I ain't messing with that right now. I have though, and it's pretty cool. So the feel of the buttons and D pad, good, great. Shoulder buttons, great. You got butt cheeks on the back. I like that. I like feeling them butt cheeks on the back. Overall, very comfortable. Good size, good shape, in my opinion. This is one of my damn favorite handhelds. Ambernick be killing it, but they do put out a lot of handhelds. It's ridiculous, dude. Every week seems like so, like they put this thing out and then they announce something else like two or three days later, sometimes two or three hours later. It's ridiculous. But this one, I love it, man. I love it. So I really like with these Android devices that Ambernick puts out the uh, built-in customizations they have. The fan controls, the RGB controls, being able to quickly change between Nintendo or Xbox button layout, the CPU configs, all is nice. I like the Ambernick button that you got on the bottom, on the bottom left, allows you to jump between the emulation front end and the Android front end, very quick and easy. Uh, so these things, they're sold with or without games included. So go Game Geek. They sent this thing to me for a purpose of review. Uh, I can't show each and every game that was included with this cube that was sent to me. But after having scrolled through the uh, build that Go Ge Game Geek included with the 128 gigabyte micro SD card that they sent me, it's typical junk ROM dump crap. Mixed up hacks, multi-region stuff. Uh, the bigger game lists, only the beginning parts of the games have uh, the box art or screenshots for the games and actually have the correct titles listed. After you scroll a little bit, no more pictures, no more actual game names. You get like the shorthand ROM names. It can be difficult to understand, even figure out what the hell you're going to be jumping into. So yeah, the build is crap. It's easy enough though, if you want to scrap it or build upon it yourself, simply plug that micro SD card into your PC, access those folders, uh, for each of the systems, delete the ROMs for the games you don't want or add games that you do want, right? And then once you put the micro SD card back into the, the Ambernick cube, press the X button or press select, like when you're in that emulation front end, uh, go into tools or just press X, like I said, scan for new ROMs and then they'll show up in those systems, right? Uh, but I'm not gonna knock this handheld for the crappy build that was included. I mean, pretty much everything that was included works. It's just not organized well or easily searchable for some things. So here, I'm not going to waste my time playing 8 or 16-bit you know, systems on this thing. 100%, that stuff will work. This has a very capable chipset. And on the build that you know it's included with, that came with this thing, we got like Wii and PS2. So, you know, I want to test that kind of stuff, right? 
So I'm going to start out on the smaller end. Nintendo 64. Zero issues. Playing any game. Any game that I wanted. You know, Nintendo 64 is a system I always have problems with on these handhelds. But not here. Everything just loaded up right away. Played fine. No stutters. No stuttering Stanleys. Nothing like that. Same thing with Dreamcast to Thomas Wave and Naomi. Not a single problem. No stutters. No slowdown. Nothing like, like I just said. No, hey, they had issues but smoothed out. None of that. Everything played perfectly. PSP. I spent some time with games I don't normally test and some that I do test a lot of times just to be sure. No issues. Now, this screen, it really isn't the best aspect ratio for PSP, but, you know, I didn't really look into changing resolutions or anything. I just played everything how it defaulted out of the box. Didn't make any tweaks or anything. Most systems, it did seem to have bezels set up or it had the screen centered with, like, black bars. But PSP, yeah, it just took the full screen. It was a hog. It just was like, hey, I'm taking it by default. Not the best look, but everything played great. It was easily maintaining 30 FPS. Now, Sega Saturn, this thing, the build that they included, only had 2D games, which was kind of lame. A lot of times they do that because the handheld can't handle beyond that. But I knew, I just knew deep down in my heart that this one could handle more. So I added Panzer Dragoon just real quick. It played fine. Saturn, it defaulted to having the screen shifted to the top for whatever reason. But yeah, it's going to play Saturn fine, it seems. Now, Nintendo Wii checked out a couple games really had no issues but the emulator kind of like psp defaulted to using the full screen uh pretty much though for any emulator if you press the button on the left side of the handheld that's next to that ambernick button has like the return and home symbol on it it'll bring you to settings and options so you can go in there and mess around with stuff if you want if you know what you're doing now using this handheld for 3ds and nintendo ds seemed pretty cool and that's the one thing i was really looking forward to especially with the aspect ratio and touch screen. So 3DS, tried a few games, things worked out pretty well. Now some games you could have, like with 3DS, the occasional stutter while shaders compile, just kind of expected, but overall wasn't a bad experience. Now also playing original DS games was pretty cool as well. Wasn't surprised to see those games work as they're not demanding at all. They play easily on many lower powered devices, but with how you can utilize the screen aspect ratio and the touch screen, it's really nice for both DS and 3DS, in my opinion. Now, besides 3DS, one of the coolest things that I wanted to check out that I saw on here was PS2. Now, I played a few games, had absolutely no issues. I saw Kingdom Hearts was on here, and I actually played quite a bit of that, had no issues. I captured some footage using a USB-C to HDMI adapter as well uh, through my capture card on my PC, but the audio was wonky. It's kind of weird. I double checked though to make sure it was just my capture card, not like in the you know cube. It was just you know being weird. Plugged it in directly into a TV and it worked perfectly fine. No issues with audio or visuals. So it's just capture card issue. Don't trip. That's all it was. Plug it into a normal TV with one of those adapters. You're gonna be fine. You can use it as a console in the handheld. Bluetooth up a controller. You're good to go. So overall. I love this thing, feels great in my hand, nice little butt cheeks, everything feels good, D-pad's good, analog sticks are good. This thing, I, I like it, man. It's weird, it's quirky, it's not gonna be for everyone. But I really like it, I really do. So there you go, appreciate you guys. Let me know what you think, thanks for watching. If you want any kind of follow-up action on this thing, let me know, we will test more. We will test more. Bye.